Did you enjoy the gift I left you in Canterbury? You will die today, Fulke! But your men may live if you come here to me and settle this alone. We have nothing to settle. Die on these walls if you will. It is your choice. No wall is high enough to keep me from you. Then come! Clam your brother if you can. I shall wait with him. If you would find us, you need only follow his screams. Fulke! What will the Skalds say when they speak of this day? They will say we unleashed such rampant slaughter that Odin himself stirred on his throne to watch. They will say that ravens blackened the sky to feast on Saxon dead. So raise your swords with me now, brothers and sisters, for today is the day we carve our names into legend! <laughs> I'm coming for you, brother. So many battles and so few scores, Basim. What's your secret? I don't get hit. Ah, simplest strategies are the best. Ah. Clear the way! Let's take down that palisade! Ah. Incoming! Ah.
Sigurd was here once, but no longer. Where has Fulke taken him? Is this Sigurd's blood? Sigurd! Every instant torment full king will suffer tenfold. The church! Full king must have taken him there! Come on, Basil! I have done all I could to help him, Ava. The rest is up to you. No! No! Brother! Brother! I'm here for you. I have you. Let me stay with him. You deal with Fulke. I'll come back for you. You cower from me, Fulke, like a rat in the dark. We are all in the dark, Ava. It is the search for the light that brings us closer to the gods. Save your babble. Death is our language now. You fight beneath the banner of ignorance, Ava. 
I could pull back the curtain for you. Give you a glimpse of what lies beyond. I need nothing from you. <laughs> this ends here. Ability to kill one and with such potential. Where are your fine words now, Paladin? Then you know. Do you not wonder, Aver, at the things I have learned? Every word you say is madness. Sigurd is an ancient one, an archon, Nephilim, Isu, call him what you will. He is reborn. He is my brother and my Jarl, and you are mind sick. He is everything we should hope to be. Fulke! Damn you to hell! Fulke! You can't run from me forever! Nobody touch her. She's mine. You are too late, Haver. I have opened your brother's mind to the truth. That is my victory. And you will go with me to the grave. That understanding. That gift. You gave him pain. Yes. To awaken him. All that power. All that potential locked away. Prison of bones! Pain 
was necessary to free him. Feel the weed, mad one. What has she done to you? Eivor! We delayed them as long as we could. Reinforcements from Winchester have come. Get Sigurd to a boat. I'll hold them off till you're safely away. Fight well, Eivor. Find us at the settlement when you can. Archers! To the walls! Is that the last of them? We have beaten them back for now, but without Guthrum's army, we do not have the numbers to hold this fort. We found Sigurd. That is what matters. Guthrum was hasty in his judgment, Eivor. You are fit to stand with the best of us. Go to your brother. The words of one beloved will heal him faster than herbs. I will see to matters here. May the gods guide you, Uber. Until we meet again. There is uh, one more thing. What are you doing still talking to me? Enough goodbyes. Go to Sigurd. Yes. Be well, Oba.
Sigurd Jarl, back where you belong. Oh, I missed you, my brother. Yeah, you missed me? Yeah. Once or twice, I hear. What? It took you time to find me. Was it for this? To enjoy your time on my throne? I did only what you asked of me. And you slew all those who questioned you. That is not what happened. Branvi, Branvi will tell you. Oh, yeah. We'll see. My dear wife. Brought to me as a gift by her clan to pacify my ambition. Yes, I'm sure she will be the one to tell me the truth. What did that witch Fulke do to you? You cannot even begin to imagine the things I've seen. What I've learned. Born of gods is who I am. A lord of war. A Roman Mars. I know who I am. I know my destiny. And you will not hinder me! Brother, forgive me. I am faint. Tired of the day and all that has passed. I need air. He's been this way since his return. Could you speak with him? Settle his mind? I can try. Stand with cheer, one and all. Today is a day... Basim, will you not join us? In time, I may celebrate. But tonight is a melancholy mood. I would rather sit here quietly, alone, with my thoughts. I understand. Do not let Sigurd's present mood upset you. He spoke warmly of you as we say it. I believe he's... We trust. Where's Sigurd gone? about this land, my friend. There you are, brother. What are you doing here? I was looking for you. Sigurd. Dark died defending my honor? So he claimed. But he was a fool. My honor needs no defense. It is stone solid. Unblemished. I offered him a way out, but... Shh. Say nothing more of the past. It is gone. There is a rift as deep as death between then and now. I was tested, Eivor, in a crucible of blood and fire. And in my agony, 
I was reborn. You may think me less than I was, but this is not so. I am greater than before. My mind is a wellspring of prophecies, visions that tell me who I truly am. For all that, I am grateful for my suffering. Sigurd, I want to understand, but all this, all you say makes little sense. Basim saw these things in me. Fulke, too. Despite her cruelty, she spoke the truth. I am more than the man I was. More than this hobbling stick that stands before you. You must look harder, Eivor. Deeper. See for yourself what they found in me. Do you see it? My greater self. I... I don't know what that means. Look! This is the face of a god. I see only my brother and my truest friend returned to where he is loved and cherished. Where he is meant to be. You are kind. But your eyes are clouded by the past. A place I can no longer see. I fear our paths diverged long ago. Go. I wish to be alone. Return to my feast and drink for me. Celebrate the days to come in my name. It seems the wind calls me back to Rantri. Let's tell her the good news. What happened yesterday? You and Sigurd disappeared during the feast. And when he returned, he went straight to our room without a word. We talked for a time. I asked many questions, but got few answers. I wish I could say more. Do you think Sigurd knows? About us? I don't think so. He would have said something. Sigurd wants to blame me for every mishap that has befallen him, but gives me no credit for his rescue. I don't understand. Yet he does speak with you. With me, he has gone totally silent. So, what now? This is for Sussex. We burned it to the ground to save one man. Yet he is barely the man we were searching for. Quite so. I want to see the Alliance map. What of Essex? We received a summons from the Elderman and his Lady of Colchester, requesting you specifically for a matter of great secrecy. Foreboding. And who is this Elderman? One of King Alfred's lackeys? According to my scouts, he is a man who cares more for his own indulgences than the safety of his people. Approach with care. I will leave at once. An alliance in Essex would be invaluable, but go with caution.
It seems Elderman Beerstan has made this ruin his longhouse. Why is my cup empty? Perhaps because... Heroic-looking Dane in our midst. I'm looking for Pearson, the elderman of the Shire. Our lord is not at home, but his wife is receiving visitors upstairs in her usual fashion. If you speak with her, pass on that we've run out of ale. Perhaps because you have drunk the barrel dry? Damn Pearson. His household is as poorly run as his land. Estrid is a good wife. Far better than he deserves. You would say that, Adrian. Your wife acts like a sow in a skirt. My sweater runs a worthy woman, you coxcomb. But she's an excellent cook, with a fine nose for truffles. If Birsten does not return soon, why he will not be the only thing spilled upon his floors. Now, gentlemen, everyone is fractious with this waiting. Let us be civil at least. At one cry from me. Sheath your blade, lady. I'm Eivor of the Raven Clan, here at your husband's request. Another Dane. I am Estrid, wife of the Lord of Essex. As you may have heard, my lord is not at home. You don't speak as one from here. Where's your home? These rain-sodden bogs and fog-washed hills are not my home, thank Christ. I come from Francia. My grandfather walked on Frankish sod. He spoke of an appetite for conquest that rivaled our own. Sadly, my conquests are reduced to pettish thanes and graceless men. All Frankish fire extinguished. I'm wary of rounding up Saxons. Is your husband stolen, drunk, or wayward? He'll be stalking the woodlands today, hunting game and ignoring the vital affairs of Essex. One such affair is why we called for you. If I can find him, I'll remind him of his duties. Ah, such would be a miracle. His favorite haunt is southwest of here. The lavender fields there attract the prey, God help him. With luck, he hasn't been eaten, but I'll return either way. is a godly virtue, Adred. Even the saints would tire of waiting for Beer Stan to hang up his bow. Dear Estrid, we must discuss the affairs of this land. With or without it. 
Fiat voluntas tua, sicut in cielo et in terra. On Christus namen, as vere. Why are you praying here? We pray for strength to face the one within that cave. A devil in man's form who commands the beasts themselves. Many times we have seen him feeding the wild beasts and speaking with them. Even the wolves do not savage him. Are you sure? You Christians are quick to name devil that which you do not understand. The birds in this wood are restless and swift to attack. Only yesterday, a fox snatched a babe from its crib. Have no doubt, he who walks backwards is among us. Either he will come out of there, or we will go in. 
You keep company with the bear. Are you as the monk says? The animals be my friends. I hear them, and they hear me. They hurt this one, now they want to hurt me. But you have set your beasts on people before. Them's that hurt my friends get hurt. But I never hurt no baby. A beast's life is not worth a person's. You are a murderer. The monk is right to call you devil. You're the same as all the others. Get him, you win! Your devil is slain. God be praised! Then we can go home at last. Take this as a sign of our gratitude. Singulus vivus longe, incomprehensible gludas qui erat, disciplus es homine. Hunting is a fine sport, but I hope the Elderman has not become the prey. No good comes from a camp this bloody. They were caught off guard as they supped. They were attacked by a beast. Something strong enough to kill a horse. Large prey left these tracks in the grass. The remains of the hunting party. This one was savaged by a large animal. The hunters were prey to a large beast or two. I can only hope that Biestam still lives. Do you see? Houston, ready your weapon. Accept your fate as a feast for bears. Ha! Your weapon strikes true. Your ethics. This one, Saxon, you won't kill today. Ah! <laughs> 
Do not let them charge you! Well fought, friend. I would not have survived this ambush without you. You have my gratitude to stumble upon me in my moment of greatest peril. Perhaps you were godsend. I'm Estridsend. Your wife and the Thanes of Essex both want your balls on a blacksmith's anvil. When do they not? You could return and report that the Savage Claw took me. Poor Beerstan, his exit pursued by a bear. And make the beast Lord of Essex in your stead. No doubt my Estrid would prefer his velvet paws to my calloused hands. So, who are you? A sellsword? I'm Norse, a no-coin groveler. Intriguing. We Saxons hear only that Danes and Norse are ferocious barbarians, all teeth and claws, with little subtlety or wit. But ho! Are you the Norse I sent word to? I am Eivor of the Raven Clan. You hinted at an alliance for the loan of my unique talents. It's blood, yes. Let us return to Colchester at once, and we'll speak more of the delicate matter on my mind. I'm glad you answered my summons. I did not expect such a skilled fighter. It's good I came when I did. You lost many men on this hunt. Good men, all. They will have the proper rights, and their families will be cared for. Your people sacrificed much for your sport. They did. There is no balm for my tortured heart. Why did you ask me here? Do you believe in true love, Eivor? I have loved. But have you truly? Has a longing burned in your breast, a sweet lingering pain, paralyzing you with its sting? There's pain enough in battle. I do not seek it out in love. I long for it. The thrill of a fight softly won. My wife Estrid loves fire. She is a fish out of water, cold and dead. She showed great passion when I met her, keeping your thanes in check. Oh, they love her, it is true. Some with too much devotion. And I have not been a good and attentive husband. I have always been a plucked goose in matters of love, and a piss-poor ruler to boot. Strong must be the hand that steers the ship, Beston. My hand would rather tug the cat gut of a... A fellow adventurer need to know the lie of the land? My prices are competitive. Yes, all right. Look here. The spot I'll mark on your map. A place I know. My hand would rather tug the cat gut of a well-crafted bow, my eyes narrowing at the sight of prey. Aye, a crown sits heavy on the head. Then let us run wild and free in the woods as the wolves do. Live on our wits, prowl and stalk and feast. You have a romantic way about you, Biston. Do not fret. My guards will not worry you when we are together. You mismark me if you think I'm capable of worry. Have you built your city in the ruins of another? No, these builders are lost to the annals of time. Far advanced of the Saxon hovels of Wattle and Daub, I have ambition to build a great palace myself, with mosaics and balmy courtyards. What stops you? That which stops all but the most creative minds. Coin, imagination, talent. And your people? Is Essex happy? That is a question I never really ponder. I suppose they are. I hope they are. Alfred believes I rule like a chickless hen, flapping and squawking over nothing but the farmer's dinner. He interferes. No, he disapproves. Is that not infinitely worse? But look, we are nearing my hall. I must face the wolves at my door before we discuss your favor to Essex, Abel. It may be I can speed your business along. Ready to help me fend off the spears of their displeasure? 
Let them speak their woes. I'll advise you if I can. Who is this owl, Beeston, that twitters in your ear? An advisor, nothing more. Here to help Essex navigate her brewing storms. Now, my dear brethren, Adrid, perhaps you will start us off. What troubles you? You're a disgrace, Beerstan. Couldn't get a sow pissed in an alehouse. Alfred's men are crawling all over Essex. King Alfred, yes. Though it is within his right, the constant presence of his men is certainly an issue. When the months are coldest, the mistletoe is full grown, cloaked in her winter strength. Meaning that we should weather this? Stay strong? Yes, that's it. Not bend in the wind like stalks of wheat. And you, Wyatt, what do you say? Your preparations for the Lammas Festival. How can you think of spending so much coin when your people are starving? Often should one make an early meal, nor fasting come to the feast. The feast, yes. The festival! This is not for full bellies, but to bless the loaf. Does that not bring us all good fortune? And Aldrich, do you yap like a she-hound as Adred does? You know my thoughts, Beerston. The feared. How can we give men to Alfred for his wars when our harvest suffers day by day? Do they not defend your land? You'll need all the men you can muster to fight the coming wars. The Danes are a great threat when provoked. Those we cannot ally with, we must fight or lose our lands. There! Have I not answered all your questions? You are a stain on this shire, Beerstan. Useless. Useless. That's right. Yet still you haunt my hall. Be gone. I haven't time for your squabbling. That ceased their prattling. A fine outcome, Abel. The very soul of balance. A firm hand is all you need, Beerston. Whether on your hunting bow or on your helm. All this talk of hunting makes me long for the woods. Your wife awaits, Beerston. Aren't you worried some other man will drench your sheets with his sweat? <laughs> the impossible Dane returned my errant gander to his coop. My pettish love. Such a stormy countenance clouds the sun of my return. Your thanes drank the ale the abbot gifted us. All of it. Now that is a tragedy my heart will not easily overcome. If he looked at me with the same affection he shows for hunting deer, our marriage might have survived. Essex seems at odds with itself. Have you called me here to fix the many problems I've already seen today? No, no, I would not inflict the infighting of my thanes upon you, Eivor. Our matters are more... delicate. And of a more personal bent, requiring a finesse and discretion that these Saxons often lack. So, what do you need of me? Our affairs are more of heart than of state, Eivor. What little passion there was between us faded into bickering long ago. We would have our freedom, Eivor. I from my wife, and my wife from Essex. I'm too sharp a weapon for so soft a task. Why not part and be done with it? Oh, were I a Dane, and divorce as simple as a slit throat. But it's not so easy as that. Does your god not allow husbands and wife to part? Our god? Our king. There is much standing in the way of a joyous uncoupling. Ours was an arranged marriage, a political need, and not easily broken. Explain yourselves, clear and plain, and I will do it. The poetry here is mind mud. We had a plan, a simple plan. A woman lost and a woman found. Some time ago, we paid a Dane to kidnap me and ferry me safely to Francia. 
As you can see, he did not deliver. He was certainly thorough in other regards. Some Norse can be quick to take coin and slow to earn it. If I give my word, it is not broken. Could we try the kidnap again? Much of the planning is done. It would only take a more trustworthy overseer. It should be a bold venture if we do. Loud and brash and seen by all. During our Lamas festival, merry peasants and guards with wandering eyes. Your return to Frankia would need a swift ship, with a captain ready to leave England. We could ask him. I would have thought his steed and seamen spent. Come find me in the market, Avo. Our unwelcome guests require food and ale to soften their anger. My wife is a gracious and attentive host, Avo. The only thing that keeps my braying thanes at bay. And the woman found? A darling Maybud, Alvida, my childhood sweetheart. I left her twenty years ago in Malden to marry my prickled pear. Twenty years? Can an ember so cold be reignited? We can hope. You must fan the flame. Find her, bring her to my lakeside cottage, and light a bonfire there. I will know to come. I believe she lived in the last house in Malden. A small, sweet place where fond memories were made. I will do as you both ask, and ask Freya for success in this love game. Good luck in your endeavors, Eivor. I pray you find my Alvida with a fair face and a yearning heart. Now, should I look for Alvida first, or meet with Estrid at the marketplace? <laughs>